Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel, I'm Rob and today I have for you an epic single story from the Pro Revenge subreddit. This story comes to us from Leveler Cleverer. Former manager ends my job at the company I loved. I helped end his career in local tech forever. Let's jump right in. This is my first one of these. I hope it qualifies. Apologies for this being so long, but I've had to keep this story to myself for more than a decade. Ironically, a recent court ruling means I'm now free to discuss the details publicly for the first time without penalty. I'm starting with here. Part 1. The Background I worked at a very big tech company for a very long time, like decades. Over the years, I had worked my way up from being a noob to a kind of specialist fixer. I became fairly well known internally as a security emergency response person. I got assigned the bad or unfixable projects, many of which made news headlines. I have many stories that I can never tell publicly sadly. Suffice it to say that multiple senior vice presidents in various divisions got to know who I was because I effectively wrangled gnarly and complex problems and herded many intense tech nerds together to resolve big things in multiple divisions over the years. It was so fun. At the time of our story, I was working on a small security team in a product engineering division. It was a somewhat turbulent time and our team of eight had withered multiple reorganizations and had so many manager changes. It was a lot, but we kept our heads down and did the work, and we all got along just fine. Sidebar and relevant later, one of the better managers assigned to run our team immediately assigned me a huge and complicated and urgently important project to manage. It would involve people in six different divisions, had seriously big legal implications, and our senior VP wanted it to happen by an aggressive deadline within like four to six weeks. Oh, and my manager was leaving imminently on a long planned vacation, so he apologetically would be away for the next three weeks and unable to assist. The project was to do something big and technical, and which had never been done before, so no one was entirely sure how to do it, who all it would require, what steps in what order, some of the key players had what we gently called difficult personalities. And oh, by the way, it would definitely make international news and cause a ripple in the industry when we did it. No big whoop, manager was a decent guy, and he felt bad about leaving me with this thorny mess. And I did it. We got all the people from all the divisions in a room and mapped it all out on a whiteboard. It took days and hashed out how to do it before the deadline, actually well before for bonus points, and we lined everyone up to get it done. Before we pulled the actual trigger on the very big thing, I had to attend a meeting with the vice president and executive leadership, several levels of management above me, and with the legal team to present the plan and to assure all of the execs that we were ready and had it all handled. So I looked the vice president in the eye and assured him that I got this. And then I did. The team did the big thing sooner than the deadline. It was flawless. We rocked that. Woot! Just another day at the office. Part 2. The Inept Manager A few months after that epic project, our good manager left us for another role and someone new moved over from an unrelated division out of nowhere. We'll call him Inept Manager. Inept Manager did not know anything about security. He did not know anything about emergency response. He didn't know anything about what our division did. In fact, no one on our team had ever heard of this guy. He was that worst kind of middle manager. Self-important, dismissive of everyone, cares most about appearances and ego, micromanages stuff he doesn't comprehend and just makes everything worse. But he apparently knows people, and those people get him job assignments because of politics, loyalty. He certainly didn't have any skills or experience for our team. Ugh, that guy is the worst. One of Inept Manager's many weird quirks was that he didn't think it was appropriate for our team 
to disagree with or correct each other in front of other people. Things in tech, specifically product development, move pretty quickly, and things change all the time. So if some of our team was meeting with someone from another team, and someone something like, so we decided to make the sky green and we're on schedule, and someone else on our team chimed in to say, actually, that's changed. We decided that the sky is now going to be blue, and we pushed the deadline back two weeks. That just happened in an earlier meeting. Oh, okay, cool. And that manager would interrupt and say, we clearly need to get on the same page. Let's end this meeting right now and reschedule when my team has all the facts straight. Um, what? That's insane. We'd literally never have any meetings if we waited until everyone knew all of the same information all the time. Other teams would routinely leave meetings with us with inaccurate info, which affected release schedules, resources. It was just a mess. Part 3. Inept Manager Hostility Shortly after Inept Manager became our manager, he started being really hostile to me. Not to everyone on the team, just me. As far as I knew, I hadn't done or said anything to earn his hostility. Suddenly, after 20 plus years at this company, I could do nothing right. While this jerk didn't actually understand most of what my job was, he was sure I wasn't doing it right. And he was quick to tell me so, and often in front of others. To the point that my coworkers would take me aside to ask what the actual F was going on. I didn't know either. The thing is, I was the only woman on the team, and I have a disability. Now, I've been through some things working in high tech over those decades. It was very much an old boys club back then. And, meh, I was fine. I'm not one to claim discrimination at the drop of a hat or for no reason. However, when I was trying to piece together the cause of this dude's hostility, some of his comments were sexist and not at all subtle. He also didn't like that due to my disability, and frankly, my seniority, I was given one of the few offices with a door on it in our new building. The rest of our team was in open floor plan cubicles, which everyone hated. He was incensed that I, a lowly direct report and woman, got an office, and he didn't. Um, I had more seniority than just about anyone, so even without my disability, I'd have scored the office ahead of him. Note that other men in our division got offices too, because again, seniority, and that bothered him less. But I was the only woman on our floor with a door and I was his subordinate. His ego did not like it, not one bit. He threw a fit about it, repeatedly. There were lots of other things he said. My favorite among them towards the end was him reprimanding me for my bad attitude in a meeting we just had. Inept manager had told me beforehand not to say anything during that meeting because he was insisting on sharing incorrect information again and he knew I'd want to correct it. So I sat quietly and kept my eyes on the PowerPoint presentation or on the floor nearly the whole time. When I asked him how I'd had a bad attitude when I hadn't said anything, as he'd requested, I didn't like the look on your face. Um, okay, dude. After realizing there was nothing I could do to make this guy happy with my work and to lose his hostility, I finally went to HR to go on the record. I knew they'd do F all about it, but I wanted to document it at least. So predictably, they told me to work harder at getting along with inept manager. And because it wasn't my first rodeo, I went back to my office and emailed HR saying, thanks for meeting with me about my concerns about inept manager. I fear his bias and misogyny will reflect negatively in my next performance review. HR should be aware that there is a real problem here, and I hope you'll take steps, etc, etc, which of course they didn't. But now it was on record. Part 4, The Axe Falls. And then a few months later, he gave me a terrible performance review as expected. Long story already long, he was trying to fire me for underperformance. Unfortunately for me, the company had started rounds of layoffs all over, and it was the worst possible time to be looking for another job internally. 
And now I had a bad performance review on my record too. I went back to HR and said, that thing I said that I was worried would happen when we met six months ago, that happened exactly as I said, now what? HR, once again, was no help. Also, they'd done literally nothing. But hey, it was on the record, again, helpful for the attorney later. Blah blah blah, when I realized I couldn't find a new gig at my company because of all the layoffs, I scored a new job for much more money at a different local tech company, and pretty quickly. I live in a tech-heavy area. There was lots of shuffling between three to four big companies during this time period, and we'd often bump into other company veterans at these other companies. It was a small world. With my track record and references, it was super easy. After that was lined up, I called an employment discrimination attorney to negotiate my exit from the company I thought I'd work at until I retired. Sad face. Because I had documentation with HR, explaining in-app managers' misogyny and ableism going back for some time, and because they'd done F all about it, and because there were witnesses who confirmed his behavior, they had no leg to stand on. They agreed to write me a relatively nice check to go away and to not sue them, and I agreed to not talk about the details of my separation agreement. I went down to my lawyer's office and signed the agreement. I looked to see who had signed the agreement for the company. I assumed it would be someone in HR, but it was still blank. I'd eventually get a copy once someone there signed it. I took my check and packed up my office and left. Bye old company. I started my new job a few weeks later. Part 5. Karma Begins This was August of that year that I left. I got my copy of the executed contract in the mail in October. Who signed it for the company? Not HR, but my exec VP. The one who asked for the urgent, highly important, legally complicated project. The guy I looked in the eye personally and then delivered on this very big thing he personally asked for, before the deadline he asked for. That is who signed off on my separation agreement. I suspect that he had no idea until that moment that I was gone and I imagine that he likely had many questions about what the F had happened. And also, why did they have to pay me a chunk of money on the way out? Whoops, I chortled when I saw it. Since the VP knew me and we had some history, and a net manager was new to the division, and was one of hundreds of middle managers he'd likely never heard of, I'm guessing a net manager had some explaining to do. <laughs> I really enjoyed the thought of that. Part 6. Karma for Reels Cut to November. As I mentioned, it was a relatively small tech community in the area, and those of us who worked in security, in particular at Company X, would often encounter other current or former colleagues at Company Y or Z or whatever. Heck, there was a ton of poaching going on between the companies. One day, I got an in-company chat from someone who'd worked in security at my old company. We'll call her Security Colleague. Security Colleague asked me if I knew someone named Inept Manager. Um, why yes, yes I did. Why? Because Inept Manager was appearing on Security Colleague's schedule to interview for an open management position the very next day. It seems that shortly after my former exec VP had signed my separation agreement contract, an app manager was actively looking for a new job at a new company. <laughs> Security colleague asked me what I thought about in app manager. I said, you know, I can't really talk about it for legal reasons, which boom, everyone knows what that means. But if you wanted to ring my personal cell phone later this evening to catch up on old times, please do. She did. I hypothetically shared some stories with her about in-app manager. I also told her where his hot buttons are, the appearance and ego thing, the dominant stuff, etc, etc, and all about his misogyny and ableism, which was perfect since she was conducting his interview. I may have shared some specific scenarios and questions to ask, which I knew would set him off. I wished her luck and for the love of all that is holy to please call me after, when appropriate, and tell me how it all went. 
it did not go well for in-app manager. When security colleague rang me, I couldn't wait. How did it go? Well, he got combative and angry and yelled at me twice during his interview to be hired as a manager. Facepalm. There were lots more details now lost to time. Except, at that company, interview loops were assessed as such. Strong hire for this role. Hire, but not for this role. Not a good fit for this job, but we like them. No hire. No hire ever. Not for any role. Inept Manager's interview was rated that last one. No hire ever. Blacklisted from any job ever at one of the biggest tech companies in the world. After being pushed out the door of one of the other biggest tech companies in the world. Derp. Shortly after that, it appeared that Inept Manager moved himself and his wife and kids a few states away to work at a smaller company in another region. It took less than six months from when I left my old company for him to be gone as well. Heh. What gets me, still, is that Inept Manager thought I was so inconsequential, so unimportant, that he didn't bother to check and see where I landed after he forced me out of the company I loved. And when he had to look for a job himself shortly thereafter, it also never occurred to him that I'd have connections with, oh, thousands of colleagues I'd worked with over the years, some of whom could now be working at company X or Y or Z where he was interviewing and where I'd scored a huge raise for myself. To this day, he doesn't know why his interview at company Y tanked so badly. And since Security Colleague was not legally precluded from sharing stories she had heard through the grapevine about in-app manager's management problems, it's possible that other of our old security colleagues at Company Z and other companies in this area heard those stories too. Which means he's unlikely to get a job at any major tech company in this area. Maybe ever. Definitely not at X or Y, and they are big companies among the biggest. And it's all because he's a butthole ableist misogynist middle manager who underestimated little old me. <laughs> Jumping down to the comment section in this one, there's one from a user called Harry WWC. It says, Indeed, I think from reading your tale that he would be so self unaware that he would believe that his interview was absolutely golden and that there was absolutely no possible way he would have done anything wrong. So it must be that insert crude comment of an interviewer that was at fault. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there with that old school mentality like this person has. Their crap doesn't stink and they can do nothing wrong. Reminds me of a certain royal... Anyway, another comment down below comes from a user called I crap Skittles. <laughs> It says, I can almost see the satisfaction you deserve through my phone screen reflecting through those paragraphs of glorious crap sandwich you arranged for his interview lunch. I do feel proud of you, even though I don't know you, for the way you handled the knife when buttering up that sandwich and filling it with all the crap he had you hauled onto to serve up when the time arrived. You even cut it diagonally and gave him a doggy bag so he could eat half at his interview and then snack on the other two quarters at any future interviews, leaving him with smelly enough breath that nobody in their right mind would entertain the idea of sitting across a table from him for an interview. Well done. Proud of you on this one. Well, that commenter definitely has a way with words. Probably one of the best comments I've ever read. And we're on video 1101 now. Something else I saw in the comments and something that I believe myself is that HR really isn't there for the employees. HR is there to guard the company from the employees and make sure that the employees stick to all the rules. They're not going to make things better for you. They're going to get rid of you if you cause even the slightest little bit of trouble for that company, regardless of what it is. Your best bet is make sure you have everything documented, and I mean everything. If you're told to do something, tell them to send it to you in an email, because you want a hard copy of it. If you're given a performance review, don't let it just be verbal. Make sure it's written down and signed by the manager that gives it to you and yourself. 
the only thing that's going to help you when you speak to the labor board or other similar organizations is a paper trail to prove what was happening. So document, document, document. I can't say that enough. Check out OP linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.